Chapters 15 through 21 of the Book of Judges from the Holy Bible in Modern English. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Mark Penfold. The Holy Bible in Modern English. Translated by Farrar Fenton. The Book of Judges. Chapters 15 through 21. Chapter 15. Afterwards, when the time of wheat harvest came, Samson visited his wife with a goat's kid, and said, I wish to go to my wife's chamber. But her father would not allow him to enter. Her father also remarked, I said to myself, he hates her, so I have given her to your friend. Is not her younger sister handsomer than she? I will give her to you instead of her. Samson, however, replied to him, i will be revenged this time on the philistines for doing me wrong and went out and caught three hundred foxes and took torches and tied their tails together and fixed a torch between the two tails then fired the torches and sent them amongst the cornfields of the philistines and burnt the shocks and standing corn and the olive yards when the philistines inquired who has done this they were told samson the son-in-law of the thimnite because he took his wife and gave her to his companion the philistines therefore went up and burnt her and her father with fire but samson said to them because you have done this i will be revenged upon you and then i will cease so he smote them hip and thigh with a great slaughter then he went and occupied a cavern in the precipice of Aitan. The Philistines afterwards went up and encamped in Judah, and advanced to Balki. When the men of Judah asked, Why have you advanced against us? They replied, You must hand over to us Samson for us to do what we intend to him. Three thousand men therefore went from Judah to the cavern in the precipice of Aitan, and said to Samson, Do you not know that the Philistines govern us? Then why have you done this to us? When he replied, as they did to me i have done to them but they answered him we have come to bind you and give you to the hands of the philistines samson only said to them swear to me that you will not assail me yourselves so they replied to him saying we will only bind you and deliver you to their hands and we will not kill you then they bound him with two new ropes and hoisted him down from the cliff but when they came to lechi and the philistines shouted at his approach and enthusiasm fell upon him, and he smashed the manacles that were upon his arms like burnt flax, and snapped the cords off his hands, and finding the fresh jawbone of an ass, he put out his hand and seized it, and killed a thousand men with it. Then Samson exclaimed, With the jawbone of an ass I have made them asses, with the jawbone of an ass I've slain a thousand men. And as he ceased speaking, he threw the jawbone from his hand, and named the place Jaw Hill. Then he was terribly exhausted, and cried to the ever-living, and said, You have given this great victory to the hand of your servant, and now I shall die for thirst, or fall by the hand of the uncircumcised. Then God opened the well at Balki, and water came from it, and he drank, and his spirit returned to him, and he survived. Therefore he called its name prayer well which is in balki to this day he afterwards judged in israel during the philistine period twenty years chapter sixteen samson once went to gaza and saw a woman a harlot and went to her the gazites said samson has come so they surrounded and laid an ambush for him all night at the gate of the city and waited all the night saying at dawn of day we will kill him but samson lay down till midnight then he arose at midnight and pulled up the doors of the city gate with the two posts and the crossbar and placed them on his shoulders and carried them to the top of the hill that is opposite hebron and after this he loved a woman in the vale of shorek and her name was delilah so the lords of the philistines went to her and said pump him and find out in what his great strength consists and in what way we can master and chain him to destroy him and we will each give you one thousand one hundred shekels delilah consequently said to samson tell me now in what your strength consists and in what way they can bind and destroy you and samson answered her 
if they bind me with seven wet ropes that have never been dried i shall become feeble like an ordinary man so the lords of the philistines brought to her seven wet ropes that had never been dried and she bound him with them while an ambush hid in her chamber then she exclaimed to him the philistines are upon you samson but he snapped the ropes as he would snap a thread of tow burnt in the fire consequently his power was not discovered therefore delilah said to samson i see you are laughing at me and telling me lies tell me now how could i bind you so he replied to her if i am bound with fresh willows that have not been used in any work i shall become feeble and be like a common man delilah accordingly took fresh willows and bound him with them and then exclaimed to him the philistines are upon you samson and an ambush was laid in the chamber but he snapped them off his arms like a thread delilah afterwards said to samson so far you have laughed at me and told me lies tell me how can i bind you and he answered her if the seven plates of my hair are woven in a loom so she fastened them to the loom and exclaimed to him the philistines are upon you samson when he awoke from his sleep and pulled up the pins of the loom with the web then she exclaimed what do you say you love me when your heart is not mine these three times you have laughed at me and not told me in what your great strength consists so when she had worn him out by talking every day and worried and exhausted his life to death he told her the whole of his heart and said a razor has never gone upon my head for i was devoted to god from birth if i were shaved then my strength would leave me and i should become feeble like another man then delilah saw that he had told her all his heart and she sent and called the lords of the philistines saying come up now for he has told me all his heart the lords of the philistines consequently went up to her and they brought the money with them and she laid him asleep on her lap and called to a man who cut off the seven plates of his head and broke and degraded him and his strength went from him then she exclaimed the philistines are upon you samson and he awoke from his sleep and said i will go out for once for a time and refresh myself but he did not know that the ever-living had left him the philistines then seized him and put out his eyes and took him down to gaza and bound him in chains and he ground at the mill in the prison with slaves but he awaited the growing up of the hair of his head that had been shaved meantime the lords of the philistines prepared to sacrifice a great sacrifice to dagon their god and to triumph for they said our god has given samson our enemy into our power they therefore showed him to the people and praised their god for they said our god has given our enemy into our power who wasted our country and who caused us much trouble and when their hearts were delighted they exclaimed bring samson and let him make sport for us so they brought samson from the slave's prison and he made sport before them and they placed him between the pillars then samson said to the warder who had him by the hand come near to me and place me by the pillars upon which the building is supported that i may rest myself on them now the building was full of men and women and all the lords of the philistines were there and about three thousand men and women looking at the sport of samson then samson prayed to the ever-living and said ever-living god remember me now and strengthen me this time also my god and i shall be at once revenged for my two eyes upon the philistines then samson grasped the two central pillars upon which the building was supported one with his right and the other with his left hand and samson exclaimed perish my life with the philistines and bent with might and the building fell upon the lords and upon all the people who were in it so the dead whom he killed with his death were more than he had killed in his life his relatives and all the house of his father descended however and carried him away and buried him between zara and eshtaol in the tomb of mano his father but he judged in israel twenty years chapter seventeen there was a man in mount ephraim named micah who said to his mother those eleven hundred of silver which were taken from you and about which you cursed and swore in my hearing i have your money i stole it and his mother replied the ever-living bless you my son so he returned the eleven hundred of money to his mother when she said to him 
i had consecrated that money to the ever-living on account of my son to make an image and a shrine but now i will give it to you he however returned it to his mother but he took two hundred of the money and gave it to a silversmith who made an image and a shrine and it was in the house of micah and micah made it a house of gods and made an ephod and a teraph and also set aside one of his sons and he was the priest to it there was no king in israel in those days each did what was right in his own eyes there was also a youth of bethlehem judah in the clan of judah but he was a levite who resided there and the man went from the village of bethlehem judah to settle where he might find a home and he came to mount ephraim to the house of micah in making his journey when micah asked him from where do you come and he answered i am a levite from bethlehem judah and i am going to settle in asher but micah said to him stay with me as a father and a priest and i will pay you ten silvers a year and a suit of robes and your board so the levite consented and the levite was content to settle with a man micah and the youth became to him as one of his sons micah also appointed the levite and the young man became his priest and lived in the house of micah consequently micah said now i know that the ever-living will prosper me because i have got a levite for a priest chapter eighteen there was no king in israel in those days each did what was right in his own eyes at that time the tribe of dan was seeking itself a district for settlement for it had not obtained until that period a district amongst the tribes of israel the danites consequently sent five men from their clan all of them bold fellows from zara and eshtaol to examine the country and search it and said to them go search the country so they came to mount ephraim to the house of micah and lodged there while they were in the house of micah they recognized the voice of the young levite and were attracted by it and said to him when did you come here and what do you do here and for how much and he answered them micah does this and that for me and hires me and i am his priest when they replied to him inquire now of god and learn the result of the journey that we are going upon and the priest answered them go in peace the ever-living accompanies the way you are going so the five men went and arrived at lasha and saw that the people inhabited it in security under the government of zidon quietly and securely and there were no soldiers in the country it was controlled and administered from zidon and they had no troubles for themselves when they arrived to their relatives at zara and eshtaol they asked what about them when they replied come on and let us assail them for we have seen the country and it is very beautiful go you idlers do not delay to march and go to seize the country for you will come to a quiet people and a land of extensive forests which god will give to your hands a place where there is no want of anything that is upon earth consequently from the clan of the danites there marched from zara and eshtaol six hundred men all of them skilled warriors and they advanced and encamped at kirith jarim in judah therefore they called that place dan's camp to this day it is behind kirith jarim from there they crossed mount ephraim and proceeded to the house of micah there the five men who had gone to spy the country of lasha remarked to their companions do you know that there is amongst these houses an ephod and a teraphim and an image and a shrine so now you know what to do they consequently turned aside and came to the house of the young levite near the house of micah and wished him peace while the six hundred men of the danites armed with warlike weapons stood before the door and the five men who had been to spy out the country entered and took the image and the ephod and the teraphim and the shrine but the priest asked what are you doing when they answered him be quiet put your hand on your mouth and go with us and be our father and priest is it better for you to be priest to the family of one man or to be priest to a tribe and clan in israel so the heart of the priest was satisfied and he took the ephod and the teraphim and the image and went along with the army who faced about and marched and placed the children and baggage and precious things in front of them when they had proceeded to a distance from the house of micah the people who were employed in micah's family shouted and followed the danites and called to the danites who turned on them and said to micah what is the matter with you that you are shouting and he replied you have stolen the god i made for myself and the priest and marched off so what have i left and yet you ask me what is the matter with you 
But the Danites replied to him, Don't let us hear your noise, for fear some rough fellows should rush out on you and take your life and the lives of your family. Then the Danites went along their way, and Micah, seeing they were stronger than himself, faced about and returned to his own house. Thus they stole what Micah had made, and the priest who had come to him, and went to Lasha, to a people peaceable and quiet, and assailed them, and burnt their city with fire, and there was no deliverance, for they were far from Zidon, and had no intercourse with any person. They afterwards settled in the vale of beth Rechob, where they built a town, and called it Dan Town, after the name of their ancestor Dan, who was born to Israel, but the name of the place was formerly Lasha. The Danites also set up for themselves the image, and Jonathan ben Gersham ben Masha, he and his sons, were priests to the tribe of Dan until the time of removing from the country, and they worshipped the image that Micah made all the period that the house of God was at Shiloh. Chapter 19 It was also in the period when there was no king in Israel, that a certain Levite resided at the back of Mount Ephraim, and he married a woman of Bethlehem Judah as a second wife. But this second wife deserted him, and went from him to the house of her father at Bethlehem Judah, and was there for a period of four months. Then her husband arose and went after her to speak to her heart, to cause her to return and attend him. So he mounted his ass and went to the house of her father, and saw the girl's father, who was glad to meet him. And his father-in-law, the father of the girl, comforted him, and he stayed with him three days, and they ate and drank and rested there. When the fourth day came, they got up in the morning, and he arose to depart, but the father of the girl, his father-in-law, said, Refresh your heart with a little bread, and go after that. So he stayed, and both of them ate together and drank. Then the father of the girl said to the man, Be content now, and stay, and let your heart enjoy itself. But the man arose to go. However, his father-in-law pressed him, so he sat down and stayed there. However, he got up in the morning of the fifth day to go, when the father of the girl said, Comfort your heart, and delay till the turn of the day. So they ate and drank. Then the man arose to go, he and his wife and servant. But his father-in-law, the father of the girl, said, See now, the day is stretching towards dusk. Lodge now here pleasantly to-day. Rest then, and enliven your heart, and get up to-morrow morning for your journey, and go to your own home. The man, however, was unwilling to stay, but arose and went, and arrived opposite to Jebus, that is, Jerusalem, where his saddled asses broke down with him and his wife, when they were near Jebus, and the day was nearly ended. So the attendant said to his master, Let us go now, and turn into this city of the Jebusai, and lodge there. But his master said to him, I will not turn to a town of foreigners where there are none of the children of Israel. Let us pass over to Gibeah. Therefore, he added to the lad, Come, let us enter one of these places, for we will lodge in Gibeah, or in Ramah. So they passed on, and marched, and came to the south side of Gibeah of Benjamin, and they turned towards it to go and lodge in Gibeah, and went and sat in the square of the town, but no person invited them to his house to lodge. At last an old man came from his work in the fields, at dusk, a man from Mount Ephraim, who was a resident in Gibeah, but his wife was a native of Benjamin. Raising his eyes, he saw the man at a distance, in the square of the town, and the old man said, Where do you go, and whence do you come? And they replied to him, We are crossing from Bethlehem Judah to the back of Mount Ephraim, from where I am, but I came to Bethlehem Judah, and I am returning to the house of the ever-living. But no man has invited me to his house, although we have straw and provender for our asses, and food and wine for myself and my waiting woman and lad. We want nothing at all except shelter. Then the old man said, Peace be with you. Bring your asses with you to me. Only do not lodge in the street. So he took them to his house, and foddered the asses, and washed their feet, and they ate and drank. They were cheering their hearts, when the men of the town, sons of Belial, surrounded the house, knocked at the doors, and said to the master of the house, the old man, Bring out the man who has come to your house, that we may outrage him. But the master of the house went out to them, and said, No, my friends, do not inflict wrong upon me, I pray, since this man has come to my house. Do not commit this wickedness. I have two maiden daughters and his servant wife. I will bring them out to you, and you can outrage them, and do to them what pleases you. But to this man do not such a loathsome thing. 
but the men would not listen to him so the man seized his servant wife and sent her out to them outside and they outraged her and maltreated her all the night until daybreak but went away from her at the departure of darkness then at the arrival of dawn the woman came and fell before the doorway of the man's house where she had been outraged until daylight her master also arose at daybreak and opened the doors of the house and came out to proceed on his journey and saw the woman his servant wife fallen before the house with her hands upon the doorstep and he said to her get up and come along but she spoke not then he brought the ass and lifted the woman up and went to his place and entered his house where he took a knife and seized his servant wife and divided her corpse into twelve pieces and sent to all the countries of israel and all who saw it said there has not been nor has there been seen anything like this from the time the children of israel came up from the mitzrayim until this day apply yourselves to it consult and speak chapter twenty all the children of israel then went out and assembled the parliament unanimously from dan to beersheba and the country of gilad to the ever-living at mizpah where the chiefs of the people of all the tribes of israel presented themselves as an assembly of the people before god with four hundred thousand men disciplined soldiers the benjaminites however heard that the children of israel had gone up to mizpah where the children of israel asked who has committed this crime and the levite the husband of the woman who had been murdered answered and said i and my servant wife came to gibeah of benjamin to lodge when the black guards of gibeah rose upon me and surrounded the house at night purposing to murder me and they outraged my wife until she died so i took my wife and cut her to pieces and sent her to all the land possessed by israel because they had committed such a crime in israel now sons of israel apply to the matter and consult about it then all the parliament arose as one man and exclaimed let no man go to his home nor any man return to his house for this is what shall be done to gibeah we will assail it by lot and we will select ten men and a hundred from every tribe of israel and a hundred from a thousand and a thousand from ten thousand as a provisional draft of the army for action and send them against gibeah of benjamin because of the great crime they have committed in israel and all the people of israel shall approach the town as if united in one man however the tribes of israel sent officers to all the tribe of benjamin to inquire what crime is this which has occurred amongst you therefore now give up those men sons of belial who are in gibeah and we will execute them and burn out the crime from israel the benjaminites however would not listen to the voice of their countrymen the children of israel but assembled from their villages to gibeah to prepare for war with the children of israel and the benjaminites at that period could collect from their towns twenty-six thousand disciplined men besides the inhabitants of gibeah and they amounted to seven hundred chosen men these seven hundred skilful men were more than a numerous force all of them were both handed at slinging stones to a hair's breadth and never missed but israel stood up without benjamin four hundred thousand men all of them disciplined soldiers men of war and they arose and advanced to bethel and inquired of god where the children of israel asked who of us shall go up to open the war with the benjaminites when the lord replied judah shall open it the children of israel accordingly arose at dawn and camped before gibeah and the leader of israel advanced to fight with benjamin and the israelites proceeded from the camp towards gibeah but the benjaminites came out from gibeah and left israel that day twenty two thousand men on the ground the army of the men of israel however were bold and continued to prosecute the war from the spot they had advanced to on the first day the children of israel also went up and wept before the ever-living until the evening and inquired of the ever-living asking shall we continue to pursue the war with the benjaminites our countrymen and the ever-living replied go up against them the israelites consequently approached the benjaminites on the second day and benjamin came out to meet them from gibeah and they destroyed of the children of israel on the field eighteen thousand men all of whom were trained soldiers so all the israelites therefore went up and all the army came to bethel and they wept and sat there before the ever-living the children of israel also inquired of the ever-living and placed the ark of the covenant of god at their right hand and phineas a descendant of eleazar ben aaron stood before it on the right hand of them and said continue still to go to war with the benjaminites your countrymen until defeated 
The ever-living also says, Go up, for tomorrow I will give them into your power. But Israel must place ambushes around Gibeah. So the children of Israel advanced against the Benjaminites for the third time, and they approached to Gibeah step by step. And the Benjaminites came out to meet the force, which drew off from the town, and waited for the attack from the victorious army step by step to the highway which leads to the ascent of Bethel and adjoins to the field of Gibeah, losing about thirty men of Israel. Then the Benjaminites said, We are driving them before us as formerly. But the children of Israel said, we will retreat and draw them from the town to the highway, then let all the army of Israel arise from their place, and advance from Baal Thamar, and the ambush of Israel, placed at the locality of the hill Moorland, must advance from the south to Gibeah with twelve thousand men, the bravest of all Israel, and fight boldly, and they will not know that the stroke of their crime is upon them. So the ever-living discomfited the Benjaminites before Israel, and the Israelites disabled on that day twenty-five thousand one hundred men of Benjamin, all disciplined soldiers. For the Benjaminites fancied that they retreated, and that the Israelites gave way to the Benjaminites. But those relied upon the ambush which they had placed on the hill, for the ambuscade kept quiet and lay down upon the hill until they rushed and attacked the whole town with the sword. And it had been arranged with the men of Israel by the commander of Israel, if the ambush succeeded, to send up a cloud of smoke from the town. Consequently the Israelites retreated to the camp, and the Benjaminites, who were encouraged to the attack, wounded about thirty of the Israelites. For, they said, they certainly fly before us as in the former battles. So they continued their retreat until the ascent from the town of the Pillar of Smoke. Then Benjamin faced round, and saw it ascending to the sky from all the town. The commander of Israel also turned front, and the Benjaminites were terrified, for they saw the punishment of their crime was upon them, and turned from the face of the Israelites to the way of the desert, and were defeated in the battle, and those who were in the town were destroyed in the midst of it. But the Benjaminites turned their flight from the level way to the refuge of the hills on the west, and there fell of Benjamin eighteen thousand men, all of them brave fellows. Thence they turned and fled towards the desert to the cliffs of Rimon, and five thousand men went up to the cliffs. But they were followed to Gidim, and two thousand of them slain. Thus all of Benjamin who fell on that day were twenty-five thousand men, disciplined soldiers, all of them strong men. But there turned and fled to the desert to the cliff of Rimon, six hundred men, and they held the cliff of Rimon four months. Then the Israelites turned upon the Benjaminites, and they struck with the sword thoroughly from man to beast, and every town they captured they set on fire. Chapter 21 Then all Israel swore in Mitzvah, saying, No man among us shall give his daughter as a wife to Benjamin. Afterwards all the people came to Bethel, and sat there before the ever-living until the evening, and lifted up their voice, and wept a great weeping, and asked, Why, ever-living God of Israel, has this come to Israel, to destroy today one of the tribes of Israel? But when next day came, the people got up and built an altar, and offered a burnt offering and peace offerings. Then the children of Israel asked, who has not come up to the assembly of all the tribes of Israel before the ever-living? For a great oath has been sworn that whoever came not up to the ever-living at Mitzvah shall be put to death. The children of Israel also grieved for Benjamin their brother, and said, Today a tribe has been blotted from Israel. What shall we do for them to provide them wives, since we have sworn not to give them a supply of wives? So they asked, is there a single tribe of Israel which has not come up to the ever-living at Mitzvah? And found that no man had come to the camp from Jabesh-Gilad to the assembly. They therefore reviewed the army, and did not find there a Jabeshite from Jabesh-Gilad. The parliament consequently sent there twelve thousand chosen men, and commanded them, saying, Go and assail the Jabeshites of Jabesh-Gilad with the sword, both men and boys, but act in this way, you shall destroy every male and every female who has had connection with a man. But they found of the population of Jabesh four hundred girls, maidens, who had not known man by connection with a male, and they brought them to the camp at Shiloh, which is in the land of Canaan. Then all the parliament sent and addressed the Benjaminites who were on the cliff of Rimon, and proclaimed peace with them. So the Benjaminites returned, and they gave them the women who came from Jabesh-Gilad, but they were not found sufficient. The people therefore grieved for Benjamin, because the ever-living had made a breach in the tribes of Israel. 
the lords of the parliament also said, What shall we do to supply wives? For we have destroyed the women of Benjamin. So they said, Let Benjamin seize upon the unwilling rather than a tribe should be blotted from Israel. For we are not able to give them wives from our daughters, because the children of Israel have sworn, imposing a curse on whoever gives a wife to Benjamin. They then made a feast of several days to the ever-living in Shiloh, which is at the north of Bethel towards the sunrise, on the highway leading up from Bethel to Shechem and near to Libna, and they also instructed the Benjaminites, saying, Go and hide yourselves in the vineyards and watch, and when you see the girls come out from Shiloh to dance in the dances, then come out from the vineyards, and each of you catch a wife for himself from the girls of Shiloh, and take them to the country of Benjamin. And if their fathers should come, or their brothers, to complain to us, we will command them to be lenient with you for taking each one his wife by force, because we cannot give to you as at ordinary times. The Benjaminites accordingly did so, and carried off wives to the number of those deficient who stole, and went off, and returned to their estates, where they rebuilt their villages and settled in them. The Israelites also marched from there at the same time to their tribes and clans, so every one came from there to his home. In those days there was no king in Israel. Every man did what was right in his own eyes. The end of chapters 15 through 21 and the end of the book of Judges Recording by Mark Penfold